Here's your paper. Okay, thanks. Okay, this is going to be probably one of my worst exams. I haven't done much revision for this, but... <coughs> Who's that coughing? That's actually so annoying. How am I meant to concentrate if this guy's just coughing in the back? <coughs> oh, and the teachers as well. How am I actually meant to listen in this listening exam when everyone's just talking and things? You now have five minutes to read through the question paper. Okay, you so we have time now to time. go with the paper, but I don't really know what to do. What's he doing? He actually seems to know what he's doing. I wish that was me. Oh, I should have actually done some revision. This guy <coughs> on the back as well. Stop <coughs> coughing. Uh, okay, this is going to be a long, long exam. The test starts now. I need to actually stop coughing. I'm trying to listen. Section A. Je préfère les filles. What? What's going on? Okay, I, I can't even understand what they're saying. What? Okay, I'm just gonna have to guess this. I have no clue. Je préfère. <laughs> Okay, so if you're watching this video, you want some sort of advice on French listening. And I would say that French listening is probably out of the four types of exams that you get during any language GCSE. I would say that listening is probably the most difficult and it's the one that people usually do the worst in. So hopefully after this video, you feel slightly stronger in what you should do to revise for listening and just overall how to do better during the exam as well. So what I'm planning on doing in this video is to firstly give you some sort of tips in terms of how to get better with your French listening and then at the end I'm going to actually go through a few French listening questions and just like talk you through how my thought process would be even though right now I am an A-level student and the last video I made about French GCSE was ages ago. It was that um, French speaking GCSE video. I mean this follow-up video is pretty late but I hope it at least helps a few of you so yeah, let's just get straight into it. I would say that single-handedly the most important thing in doing well in your French listening exams is vocabulary and I think that's something that you should know by now already that vocabulary is a big big part of not only the listening exam but also the reading exam as well as the speaking and the writing but more so towards the listening and the reading because you don't get to choose what pieces of vocab they give you you have to work with whatever they give you and so you need to make sure that you're familiar with the entire list of vocabulary and that's why I have created a memorize if you don't know already uh, down in the description you can click that and I heavily heavily recommend to just do like five words a day or like ten words a day that's what I did when I was in year 11 and year 10 as well slightly not as much but if you try and learn as many of those vocabulary words as you can you're gonna be so much more stronger when it comes to the exam because one thing the listening tasks usually do is throw in small words that just are very obscure and you wouldn't know the meaning of unless you had gone over them beforehand so just knowing those like small bits of vocabulary they really build up over time and you're going to over time be able to like answer more questions and one thing I also recommend doing is once you've completed a listening exam to go over the transcript of the listening exam usually when you find like for AQA if you go to the AQA website where the past papers are for listening you can also find the transcripts for all of the listening tracks and so using those you can try and highlight any words that you don't know the meaning of and then add them to like a Quizlet or a Memrise or whatever just find some sort of way to learn those pieces of vocabulary because I would say it's probably out of all the things I'm going to talk about today the most important thing to know because if you walk into the exam no matter how good you are at like interpreting what they're saying if you just don't know what they mean in the first place then you're not going to get anywhere because a lot of the marks are just stating what someone's saying and for that you need to know your key piece of vocabulary if you don't know where to start i would say click the link in the description below i've got a memorize and it's all neatly organized into different categories so if there's a specific part that you are very like unfamiliar with start with that and just try and make sure you learn all of those words or at least the most you can because it is a very very long list but trust me if you know all of them you're very very rarely going to get a word in in the listening exam that you're not going to have heard of before so 
it's probably one of the most foolproof ways in doing well in your listening exam. Another thing a lot of people say after they come out of any sort of listening test is the people spoke way too fast and I 100% agree with that. Like it's really difficult to pick out what they're saying when you just can't keep up with the pace that they're speaking and that's really really important for the listening exam where once you've done a question you're done with that question you can't go back and check your work because you don't you can't replay a track in GCSE. The best way to make the voices feel slower is to get as familiar as you can with the French language and one way you can do this is through listening to French music another way you can do it is through podcasts or through movies just be able to get more used to like listening to French because if you listen to people speaking French at a really fast speed then the GCSE speed that they speak at is going to feel slow because most of the time during the GCSE exam they usually purposely try and speak slowly so people can understand what they're saying and so if you listen to just natural spoken French even if you don't know what they're saying over time you're going to be able to pick out keywords that they're saying and you're going to be able to be more like familiar with that pace of speaking and then when you come to the actual listening exam it's not going to feel as fast and one way I did this was through podcasts I have mentioned this before but I listened to Duolingo podcasts they're really good because they're not only like good for your French speaking and your listening they are also pretty interesting so I highly recommend you checking them out but if you find any sort of French movies as well one thing I do recommend when you're watching a French movie is to have the subtitles in French as well even though it is probably going to make your viewing experience more annoying it will help in like pairing the words to the voices and making it easier for you to like pick out what people are saying in French even if you don't know what they mean at least you can like understand what words they're saying and that can be really useful for the French part of the paper where you have to respond in French so yeah the more you listen to French the more likely you're going to do better in the French listening because the speed at which they speak at isn't going to feel as fast especially for the first couple of questions they speak really really slowly for those ones near the end the pace does kind of speed up but if you're already used to that fast speed trust me over time it's gonna be more and more bearable. Those two are the main tips for listening. You just need to make sure your vocab is on point and you're familiar with the pace that they speak in. After that you're fine, that's literally it. The difficult part is just learning that vocab and getting used to their pace of speaking but also you need some sort of technique during the exam as well and that's one thing I'm going to go over with you as well. So before the exam you usually have, I don't know if it's the same for other examples, but for AQA you have like five minutes where you get to check over the paper and that five minutes is crucial. Please, please use it. Don't be a person who just flicks through the paper once and goes, okay, it's fine. There's no soundtrack. I don't need to do anything. What I recommend doing is in that five minute period to go over every question, see what they're trying to ask from you and try and already start noting down vocabularies that they might say when they're speaking. So if it's talking about like a bakery, already note down the word boulangerie and see if they say it anywhere and just stuff like that and make sure you start writing it's really really important to have things written down not only for the five minutes beforehand but because they repeat the same thing twice on the first go always just write stuff down write what they're saying so even when you're checking over the work you can at least have something to look back over because if you haven't written anything down all you've written is one letter you can't go back over your work and see okay if there's any questions that you're a bit uneasy about you can't even check your answers with those because you have nothing to work off of anymore so on the first go I would say don't write what letter you think or what what word you think is the answer yet unless you're 100% certain just try and note down anything that the person might be saying or the people and then on your second go write down what you think it is uh, that way trust me it's going to work a lot better not only for you at that moment but when you're going back over it because sometimes for a question it might be like way too easy so you have all this time left over to look over past questions that you might have found difficulty in so if you had already written words down to help you with that it makes it a lot easier to check over your work so now let's actually do a few listening questions just so you can understand what I mean okay so here I have the higher tier paper one listening for I think it's November 2021 or something yeah um, so if you want to follow along at home I'm not going to do this entire paper but if you do want me to do GCSE paper walkthroughs if you like that kind of material please let me know in the comments down below but I'll go over just a few questions and how I would approach them so if I just go down right now um, here we have a question so imagine this is my like five minutes to go over the test and just just a reminder I haven't done French in quite a bit of time now so um, 
just forgive me if I don't know any words, but um, okay, so your French friend is talking about films at the cinema. What t three types of films does she mention? Okay, so comedy is. I'm assuming la comédie is a word, um, maybe something to do with like rigolo, drôle, anything to do with like the word funny maybe, so I would just like write down words, uh, drôle maybe, I'm, I'm not sure, just anything, I don't know why I'm putting an E for that one and nothing for that, but um, it's just all meant to be really quick, I would usually not make notes for these like multiple choice ones here at the very start because they're usually pretty easy the ones near the start are usually the person speaks very slowly and so it's very easy to digest what they're saying um, musicals maybe they might say something about la musique okay or like uh, maybe a specific type of instrument they might mention well, actually what is it it's films okay they wouldn't really do that but um, romantic films maybe about like uh, uh, l'amour love the film, the uh, film uh, romantique. Um, I know they might talk about le mariage, maybe so marriage. Uh, science fiction films. Oh, um, I'm not really sure what science fiction is in French. I know that science is, uh, is it science? <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. We can use that as like a uh, if the others don't work, that one can work. Uh, war films, I guess la guerre. Um, which is the word for war, maybe les soldats they might talk about, uh, they might talk about, I can't really think of anything else that they might talk about for war, uh, westerns, <laughs> no clue, <laughs> let's just listen to the thing and see what they say. The test starts now. Oh, this gives me memories. Not good one. Je préfère les films drôles. There we go, drôles. Rire also aussi to laugh. Une belle histoire d'amour avec une fin heureuse. Okay, amour. Comme un mariage. Oh, mariage is all right. Où on voit des soldats. Des soldats, okay. Mourir, ça, non. Okay, so there we go. They've mentioned <laughs> nearly all the words I've actually written down, which is okay, that's actually insane. But okay, so they mentioned the word drôle, so funny. And they also said something about uh, qui me font rire, so to laugh. Okay, so A is definitely one of them. They've also, t they talked about l'amour, l'histoire de l'amour or something. So that just means like story of love. I think they talked about marriage as well. So then that would be C. And then they also said, I think they talked about les soldats. They used the word tuer, which is to kill. So you can see ace there we go easy peasy done that's the first question next one okay these ones are pretty easy let's just like skip down a bit let's go to this one living in switzerland on the internet you find this podcast about life in switzerland answer the questions in english oh yeah just don't make those kind of silly mistakes always remember if they say answer in english answer in english and vice versa for french and like make sure you always put true false not mentioned in the right language that's always like silly silly mistakes that you could easily lose out on the symbol d'une meilleure qualité de vie mais moi je l'ai choisi car dans ce pays on parle plusieurs langues plusieurs langues Suisses that's one consomme beaucoup de chocolat donc on en vend partout Chocolat. Okay, another thing that they like to do in listening exercises is they usually put pauses. So whenever, like for question five, you can tell we have two things to talk about. And they usually put a pause between the two things to help you like write it down. So they kind of give you a little nudge. So like if I replay it again, you might notice it. Number five. Oh, it's started all day from the beginning. No, it's so nice. Suisse est symbole d'une meilleure qualité de vie. Now look, they say, me, moi, that's important, sometimes, okay, shush, shush, um, sometimes they say something at the beginning which is completely irrelevant, and then they say, me, moi, okay, so you always need to be able to distinguish if they're saying something positive when the answer is looking for something negative, or if they're saying something about a specific person, but they talk about generally first, you always need to make sure what you're writing is specific, because otherwise the mark scheme is going to, like, discredit anyone that says something about what they said in the first part here. If that makes sense. On parle plusieurs langues. Okay, so there we go. Et les Suisses, <laughs> con, je les I did pause that there, but look. Dans ce pays, on parle plusieurs langues. That pause. Et les Suisses consomment beaucoup de chocolat. Donc, on en vend partout. Okay, so I didn't understand that very, very last part. 
but that's fine. I heard the word chocolat, so that's one reason this person's living in uh, Switzerland, and also the fact that people speak lots of languages, plusieurs de langue. So you can see it's all about the the vocab. The vocab is the main part, and especially at the start, the pace at what they, like what they're speaking, it's nothing to worry about. It's not actually that bad. It's just if you start losing track at the start, you might start worrying, and then everything starts to go downhill from there. So sometimes that could potentially make you like do less well in a question, for example. Uh, people speak lots of languages. And they also said uh, there's lots of chocolate or something. Okay, I, I did forget. I meant to, on the first try, write everything down. I should have done this, okay? but. On the first try, I would usually write down the word chocolat, plusieurs de long, I'd write this stuff down. And so the second time they start saying it, I can then be like, okay, yeah, um, I, I was correct. Okay, let me write it down. Okay, let's just go straight to like the last question. These are two, like they're not too bad. Oh, let's do this one, charity events. You hear these students talking about school fundraising events and they usually like giving these type of questions where you have to like distinguish whether their opinion was positive, negative or both. So let's get this question up this is question 17. just generally across positive and negative so we're looking for words like you also need to pay attention to their intonations and their like tone uh, sometimes when they're speaking very negatively about something you can hear the anger in their voice and that can potentially help you and other times if they say stuff like uh blah 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 sip in law uh, and then something else, then they might be talking about two separate opinions, so one positive, one negative. So if they say things like that, you need to be able to watch out for those small, like, subordinating words in between that could potentially help you figure out what's going on, because sometimes you have no clue what they're saying, but you just have to use those, like, intonations and tones to work out whether they're saying something negative or positive. Laver des voitures, et franchement, on a perdu notre temps. Il y avait okay. peu de gens intéressés car il pleuvait ce jour-là et les autos étaient vraiment sales. So I didn't write much down for that, but the, the first part was quite useless. I did hear something about perdu notre temps, I think, lost our time, a waste of time or something. Um, but I did hear, one thing I did hear which makes it obviously negative is the words pleuvait and sale they both clearly mean that it's negative. I didn't hear anything positive, but obviously it would be replayed. So let's just replay it and just double check now. Il y avait let's, des start. Voitures. let's just start from the beginning. On a lavé des voitures et franchement, on a perdu notre temps. We lost our time, but we il wasted our time. peu de gens intéressés car il pleuvait ce jour-là. Et les autos étaient vraiment sales. You can hear the anger in her voice. So that's another thing that would make it obvious that it's negative. Does it get repeated now? Or... Oh yeah, they repeat it now. Okay, let's just go straight to 18. Toutes les équipes étaient formidables. Malgré ça, personne ne pouvait répondre aux questions. Elles étaient super compliquées. Okay, I think it's both positive and negative, but let's just double check. I've written down for formidable, so it's definitely positive. Number eight. But they said malgré ça, which I think means even though, or something along those lines. So I think they might be saying something negative Toutes as well. Les équipes étaient formidables. Okay, so that's positive. Malgré ça, personne ne pouvait répondre aux questions. No one responds Elles to questions. Super compliqué. Okay, super compliqué as well. Let's just put that down. So. You can tell now if I'm looking back over this work, I can just look at this and be like, yeah, that's positive. That shows that it's going to be a change in opinion. So then this is going to be negative. So it's going to be P plus N. And you can also see if I'm writing, let's just assume this is positive and this one's negative. I put them to the side just in case if I do want to change it, I can just do that. Because if I put the P in the middle, for example, it, I would have to scribble it out and then put P plus N and it would just make it look a bit messy. It's just something I do for these type of questions. But yeah, I think that's enough. Um, should we do one more question? Let's do this very last question of the... Actually, let's do one English one. I mean French. Let's do one in, entirely in French. Let's go for this one. At the very end, the very last question. So, les réseaux sociaux. I know that this video is 
been quite long now because of this, but I hope this kind of gives you an idea of how you're meant to do a listening paper. Or not really how you're meant to, but one way you can do it that could potentially help you. Numéro 29. Also, whenever you're doing papers like these for practice and revision, always keep them with you afterwards, or save them, or whatever, like any way that you do them, make sure you have them with you, especially the questions you got wrong, because you always want to be going over those transcripts and making sure that every piece of vocabulary in those paragraphs you can understand. Even if you got a question right, if there was a sentence that they said that you didn't properly understand, always look at a transcript and see why. Oh, it's two things Fatima in once. A créé son compte YouTube le jour de son anniversaire. Okay, so we literally just copied down. Un an, sur ce réseau social, elle y enseigne comment bien mettre du maquillage. Okay, that was a lot. That was a lot. I hate these kind of questions. The ones where they say two things at once. So you have to be paying attention at both. In this, I don't recommend you writing French words down when they're speaking because you just write those French words in the gap because that's what you're doing. You're just copying down what they're saying. So what do they say? Sur ce réseau social, elle donne des cours pour apprendre à... I didn't hear what they said. That's the thing. I just remember them saying le jour de l'anniversaire. I know my French is wrong here, but... Anniversaire. I think that's how I spell it. <laughs> Don't come at me, guys. I haven't done French in some time. Okay, let's hear the second part again. Because as long as the French makes sense and it doesn't have a different meaning to what it's meant to be, you get the mark. It doesn't have to be perfectly grammatically correct. Fatima a créé son compte YouTube le jour de son anniversaire. De son anniversaire. Depuis un an, sur ce réseau social, Elle y enseigne comment bien mettre du maquillage. Okay, I have no clue what she said. Elle enseigne something something maquillage. Maquillage, I'm pretty sure is makeup. So if you didn't know that, that's a vocab thing. You just need to know that. So she gave her account to learn. Huh? <laughs> I don't understand what this means. Um, okay, I am going to have to guess here. Pour apprendre à... Enseigner la maquillage. I don't even know if maquillage is feminine. I think what, what this is trying to say is that she's trying to give lessons to teach people how to do makeup. I am going to check the mark scheme because I'm not sure about this one. Uh, you know what, let's just check the mark scheme right now. Let's see why. Actually, no, let's just do all the questions first and then go over the mark scheme. Okay, yeah, once again, they're talking about uh, beauty products for this next question, and it's a follow up from the one before. So that could kind of give you a hint that she's talking about makeup. So just using those kind of things, using the question to answer another question can also work. Une grande marque lui a demandé de représenter ses produits de beauté sur Instagram. Elle espère que la publicité sera sa prochaine carrière. What? <laughs> okay, so I heard une, un grand marque, which is a a big company. So I'm assuming the first part is talking about a sponsor. So she she's representing the products of beauty of une grand marque. That's what I'm assuming it is. And then elle voudrait faire carrière dans le secteur de. I'm assuming it would be le secteur de beauty, right? Beauty. That's a guess though. I don't know. That just makes sense. You don't need the listening for that, right? I might be wrong, but let's just hear it one more time. Une grande marque there we go. lui a demandé de représenter ses produits de beauté yeah, there. sur That's Instagram. The first Elle espère que la publicité sera sa prochaine carrière. S sera uh, la publicité sera sa prochaine carrière so la publicité I'm pretty sure is advertising and uh, even if you don't know that you can just put that there la publicité that's that's it okay that makes sense I'm actually if that's the answer I'm actually quite proud I got that one but yeah okay let's go over the mark scheme now okay question one ace let's go that was easy uh, let's go straight to the next question that we did was question seven, no, question five. We just did question five and then we just skipped the rest. So the first mark was they speak several slash many slash lots of different languages. Do you have to mention the word different? I just said they speak lots of languages. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, as long as you mention the key idea, 
that's fine. You always need to look at the reject side and see if what you've written is on the reject side. If it's not, then you're going to assume you got the mark. But if you don't know, always try and assume you didn't get the mark because that way you're going to be more harsh on yourself and you're going to want to do better next time. The first mark is correct. Second one, chocolate is sold everywhere. And I just wrote lots of chocolate. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I got the mark for that. Um, <laughs> No, okay, that's annoying. So I had to mention the fact that you can buy chocolate anywhere or any sort of the fact that chocolate's sold. I don't think you can just say lots of chocolate. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just gonna be harsh on myself. I'm not entirely sure if that would get the mark. Question 17. Okay, let's go to 17 now. So the first one was negative. Yep, that was quite obvious. The second one was P plus N. Yep, we got that as well. Okay, and we didn't do the rest because we weren't bothered. Usually I would do, like, if I was revising this, I would do the whole paper, obviously, but for video reasons, I don't want to be here for an entire, like, hour to being one paper. Okay, so question 29, I think that was the last one we did, 29 and 30. So the first mark is... Huh? Oh, why did I hear... Okay, so the, the answer apparently is a year on an and I talked about anniversaire so I'm completely wrong for that oh I think they meant like uh, I think they said that it's been a, a year since they've done it or something okay that's weird well I didn't get the mark there that's annoying uh, okay next one uh, I can't even speak uh, 29.2 it's maître du maquillage okay I put Enseigner la maquillage. I'm going to give myself the mark because I've mentioned maquillage, but <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I got the mark there. Um, okay, I got the mark for grande marque, and I also got the mark for la publicité. Okay, there we go. And yeah, that is a French listening paper, and that's how I would usually do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I hope this video kind of gave you a bit more of an idea of what to do in your French listening exam. Yeah, um, if you want another video like this in depth on French reading and French writing as well, please let me know in the comments down below or in my email, which is also in the description. And just make sure to learn your vocab and get that French listening pace up to date. And that's it. I don't have anything else to say. So I'll see you again next week. Bye.